Welcome new listeners and returning listeners to today's episode of the Black Business Roundtable. I am your host, Doug Blackshear, broadcasting to you live from the city of Oakland, California, where diversity is our name, our middle name. Every 4 p.m. Pacific Coast time and every 7 or 7 p.m. East Coast time, every Thursday, sending love and hugs to our own, our very own Dr. Ashley Coleman, Doctor of Psychology. And as soon as time permits, we hope to see her back in the studio. We have a great guest today. I mean, this man has come on to the show and has lit it up. And we are honored to have him back on the show, the Honorable Ella Hugh Harris, 46th Mayor of Oakland, California. And let me tell you something. He's, he was a man who served. A lot of these politicians now, they're getting paid while the city of Oakland, county of Alameda, state of California, and the United States, people are getting played, their constituents. Celebrating this month, courtesy of National Day Calendar. National Day uh, Calendar, this is a, amazing, and you ought to look into it and, and follow it a little bit. Hashtag, uh, National Women's History Month, National Single Parents Day, Week of Solidarity with the people struggle against racism and racial discrimination. And it's shameful that it's still racism is a huge problem here today. And not only in Oakland, Alameda County, state of California, but all across the United States. And let me tell you something. Some of these companies perpetuate DEI, diversity, equity, and uh, inclusion. And that is the least thing that they're doing in these businesses. And we're going to start pointing them out more as we carry on into the year, to the election year. Uh, especially companies like Amazon, where we had a guest on last year who, uh, who was killed on the job because of lack of COVID uh, awareness. So we are deeply concerned about racism in this country. And we hope, we hope that our country, our city, our counties, our states start to uh, fiercely look at what's going on out here. Hashtag National Women's Story Month. Or excuse me, hashtag National Women's History Month. Hashtag National Single Parents Day. Hashtag, uh, and, and their website is as listed below. A calendar note from Equal Justice Initiative, EJI. On March 21st, 1981, a 19-year-old black man named Michael Donald. Now, we're not going to talk about that story because it's so brutal. It's so heinous. But we hope that you look at it, look it up on EJI, Equal Justice Initiative, dot org, EJI dot org. Learn more about our history of, ra of racial injustice on EJI.org. Today on the Black Business Roundtable, we are honored to have back, honored well, to have back, Mr. Elihu Harris Esquire is in the house. Woo! He is in the house again. And let me tell you, every time he comes on, he lights it up. So we're going to welcome back Mr. Uh, Honorable Elihu Harris Esquire, uh, who was the 46th mayor uh, uh, in Oakland, California. Important financial announcement. In case you have not heard, the Affordable Connectivity Program, ACP, was planned to end in April. It appears households may receive a partial discount in May 2024, what is 
ACP. What is the ACP program? This is a federal program. Yes, a federal program that offers eligible households a discount up of up to $30 per month towards internet connectivity and up to $75 a month on quali qualifying tribal land. If you are participating in the program, check your email and, con and contact your internet service provider now to get up updates and budget for your May 2024 billing. Once again, the Affordable Connectivity Program, known as ACP, is ending as federal funding is ending for this program that was started to provide internet connectivity to, uh, to everyone during the pandemic under the bipartisan infrastructure law under President Biden, not Trump, President Biden. So the information is listed right below, on the bottom of the screen. Please follow up and make sure you get your uh, uh, the budget or you get your update on your um, um, money that you that you're eligible to get for the for the internet connectivity. Also, let's get to the meat of this show. Thumbs up, dun dun dun. dun. Who is it? Someone you know, or possibly an organization you may be familiar with. If you have a suggestion to share it with us and for a chance for us to share your thumbs up, dun, 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 or you may have a thumbs down and we will share that too. Hashtag thumbs up, hashtag thumbs down. Thumbs up, possibly new satellite HBCU campus in the Bay Area and everyone trying to bring this through it, bring this to fruition. Damn, we need a black campus in the, in the Bay Area. Black Panther, uh, uh, black excellence, uh, Angela, Dr. Angela Davis. That's all we would leave. And we would see if we can have her come teach the, one of the classes. <laughs> that would be awesome. Damn, that would be awesome. Can you imagine the pride on a campus of color from the students, professors, staff, and surrounding communities welcoming such a institution? So let's let's cheer for the HBCU coming to uh, fruition in the Bay Area. Now, thumbs down goes to dun, 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 the orange man. The captain of bull, no, the general of bullshit, Mr. Trump. I don't even call him President Trump because he's a, the things that he's out there saying about what he's going to do if he gets back in office is shameful. It's shameful. And you black people out there who are talking about voting for him, you need to listen to his rhetoric. When he comes, if he wins, and I'm going to be pushing this every week, if he wins, this country will, it, it won't be the same ever again. And did you hear what he also said? If he doesn't win, it's going to be a, 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 a riot. It's going to be a, a civil war. So this is the type of rhetoric that this man is shoveling around. That's why it's important that everyone, everyone gets out there to vote and take a friend, take, a, uh, take your family. Uh, take a neighbor, but we have got to get out and vote. And if we don't, this could, it could be terrible. It could be really, really terrible. So thumbs down, dun, 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 dun. thumbs down goes to the orange man, uh, Mr. Trump, the king of bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> Audience, I am glad you are tuning in to hear my discussion today with the Honorable Elihu Harris Esquire the 46th mayor of Oakland, California from 1991 to 1999. The Honorable Elihu Harris, the Honorable Elihu Harris Esquire earned his Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from Cal State University of Hayward. Now it was called uh, Cal State East Bay. Also earned a Master's of Public 
policy from University of Berkeley in 1969 and his JD from the University of California, Davis School of Law in 1972. He is also a member of the esteem of the esteem fraternity, and that is fraternity of Kappa, Al Kappa Alpha Psi. Mr. Harris served as the mayor of Oakland and has an office building named after him, the Elihu Harris State Office Building in downtown Oakland, California as well. This man is, a, is, a, is an awesome, awesome man and, and provided the city of Oakland with services during the big firestorm that destroyed hundreds of homes in the Oakland Hill. He uh, worked with his administration and the utilities and the carpent or the uh, contractors to make it easy so that the houses that burned down during the big firestorm could get rebuilt quickly, unlike uh, other areas. Uh, in not only uh, uh, the county of Alameda, state of California, but all across the United States. He was one of the few politicians that made it uh, easy for people to get their houses rebuilt. Also, hashtag Elihu Harris, hashtag Elihu Harris Esquire, hashtag Kappa Alpha Psi, hashtag Mayor of Oakland, hashtag Elihu M. Harris. So while we wait for our guests to get here, I want to talk about some of the things that are happening here uh, in Oakland, in the county, in the state, and all across the nation. We have, um, how can I say it? We have politicians that are not serving their constituents. We have politicians who have many, many um, uh, opportunities to make it better in the city of Oakland, in the county of Alameda, in the state of California, and all across the United States. But they're not serving in a capacity that's going to make it better for their constituents. Now, I'm not saying all politicians because we have a few good ones. Next week, we're going to have a young lady uh, who just called me and uh, said that she wants to make sure that um, um, she's able to get her her, 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 work, her word out there in regards to what she has done, what she continues to do. Um, let's be clear, folks. We have politicians who are talking really good until... It's time to take the uh, newlywed hat off and start serving the city. Our city, our county is plagued with uh, many uh, issues right now. And one of the biggest issues is it's uh, politicians who are uh, generating a lot of money, a lot of money, and they are not doing their job. Uh, it, it's so clear to me when I look at who I talked to prior to them getting elected. And um, they talk a great, a very great uh, bunch of bullshit. Let's just be honest. Oh, we're going to do this. The new administration is gone. Where are we going? <clears throat> and let me tell you, um, Oakland right now is plagued with a lot of issues. Oakland right now is plagued with a lot of issues. And we have, um, I just read and saw um, in the newspaper that uh, the police department, Cheryl, CHP, and some other organizations are finally uh, uniting to address the crime on the Hagenberg Corridor, which has uh, devastated the local economy. Uh, in and out Burgers leaving. Uh, Black Bear Diner has left. Uh, Denny's has left. 
Uh, Starbucks has left. So as we look forward to uh, seeing what is going on in the city of Oakland, California, I'm in hopes that people will will unite and the politicians you know take this seriously businesses are hurting here in oakland um we just had the vice mayor on last week who was talking about um some of the great things that the mayor's doing or not the vice mayor excuse me the deputy mayor so we're in hopes that she continues to um uh work with the politicians in this area in districts one through uh, seven and we hope that the mayor's office will understand the depth and the lack of um well what's the best word said the lack what appears to be the lack of concern for the citizens in oakland the lack of concern for the um uh, businesses here in Oakland. You know, they did a study recently on uh, homelessness. And the study said that homelessness in Oakland has, or not Oakland, but in California, we're 7% of the total population, but are four times uh, homeless population than any other group of people. So, when people talk about there's no racism, when people talk about um, excluding the diversity, equity, and inclusion (DEI), and you can also look that up on um, on my Facebook, pa- uh, a LinkedIn page. It's a group of uh, civil rights lawyers who are looking to address uh, what the seriousness, the seriousness that companies have appeared to. Uh, demonstrate that they got these departments but they're not doing anything to address the homelessness and if we were to look at the opportunity that um, black people the what black people bring to the table um, the 400 plus years of slavery that we have been inundated with I think it would be, uh, it would behoove me, it would behoove uh, everybody to look at reparations. I bring that up quite a bit, but the reparation is something that all other groups of people get except black people. We can't get an apology. One, One thing I could say in San Francisco, they have just um, uh, issued some kind of apology for the black people in that city. Please leave your message. But um, it, it appears that reparation needs to be in a form of uh, uh, revenue, in the form of uh, dollars. Um, as I said all the time, and uh, you know, my great 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 grandfather had five. I had fifty. Uh, um, slaves, white people, you know, I think we, his heirs, um, my family, our family would have a much better opportunity uh, and we would not have the high rates of um, uh, lack of health. We're at the bottom. Home ownership, we're at the bottom. Businesses, we're at the bottom. Um, uh, oh, this is Mr. Elihu. Hello. Yes, sir. We waiting for you to come on to the show. Oh, I didn't know that. You said email? Yeah, yeah. Check your email. All you have to do is click on the button. Which is it? Uh, one forty-four. Oh, that No, it it will be from. It will be. You got it. Okay, just click on and everybody's waiting to see you. Okay, thank you, sir. Audience, while we wait for Mr. Harris to 
Uh, come on to the show. While we wait for Mr. Harris to come on to the show, what we want to do here is we want to talk once again about, since we have one of the greatest mayor that Oakland has ever seen, he was also in the assembly. This man served. The city was not in such a disarray. And once again, his accomplishments were so great where they named a state building after him, the Elihu M. Harris State Office Building in downtown Oakland, California. So this man, every time he's come on to the show, he's he keeps it real. And you hear me talk about the previous mayor, uh, Mayor Lobby Libby Schaff, who shafted the city. It was a black woman who had a program called Promise. And what this program did, it was a promise to um, send kids to college if they graduated from high school. Mayor Lobby Libby Shaw turned the program into the Oakland Promise. Got tens of millions of dollars from companies like Clorox, Salesforce. And let me be clear here. Let me be brutally clear. I haven't heard of one kid that's got any money and uh, gone to college off now. I, I could be wrong. And if you talk to Lobby Libby, to have her call me. She knows my number. But these are the types of politicians that I talk about that we got to uh, start opening our eyes to. We got to start checking it because they're getting paid while we get played we put these people in office hello okay i'm gonna send it i'm gonna send it to you right now all you got to do is click on while we get mr elihu set up okay forward Okay. Well, we get Mr. Harris set up here, but I still want to get back to uh, Mayor Lobby Libby. Um, and I'm a black man, so this is not anything against Lauren Taylor as a as a as a black man. But when Lauren Taylor was in office, and the reason why I was so aggressively uh, campaigning against him uh, is because when he was in city council i met him at a uh, campaign where uh where they had the candidates come in a can candidate for him. and i asked him where's your money coming and he said oh the grassroots i said no 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 where's the bulk part of your money coming from oh uh mayor lobby libby i said really so then that means you're going to be loyal to libby and his response to that was, no, I'm my own man. And I I checked the record. His um, voting was 90% aligned with Lobby Libby. So if you were going to just vote like Libby, why didn't you just be honest at the beginning? And then I would have made sure I was campaigning against you. So when he ran for mayor, uh, one of the things that I made sure of, and I was definitely diligent, is that I made sure that everyone knew who he was. And that's the thing, audience. We have got to start identifying these um, candidates, incumbents, who say something to us and then do something against us who says something to us, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make it better in the city, but they don't do that. And until we start holding these uh, candidates accountable, that's what, now I give you an example, Carol Fife, Carol Fife, Pamela Price. Oh, there he is right there. Lord have mercy. This audience, I got to give this man another introduction because he is somebody who you have to introduce more than once because his accomplishments here in Oakland, 
his service to the city of Oakland uh, has been remarkable. Today, I want to reintroduce Mr. The Honorable, the Honorable Mr. Elihu Harris. How you doing, sir? Brother, I'm alive. Every day is a good day when you wake up. You know, whether you late or whether you early, you always turn it out. <laughs> I'm, late or I'm early. I'm always on time. <laughs> hey, how you doing, mister? Uh, how you doing, Elio? It's good to be with you. We talk all the time. Uh, it's good to be able to share you, with, uh, share you with an audience. Well, we have an audience from coast to coast. And then even after the show, I get calls from East Coast, down South, Chicago, Chi-Town, and they said, can we borrow him? <laughs> now, look, hey, we need to borrow each other. Hey, we ain't got nobody but each other. Nobody cares about us. We don't care about ourselves. Well, audience, this is the man who, when, and I mentioned this earlier, when Oakland Hills burned down, hundreds of houses were destroyed. He banned his administration together to work with the uh, uh, different agencies in the city, work with the uh, PG&E. Uh, Bob Harris was the, the regional manager at the time, worked with East Bay Mud. He worked with contractors and builders. And it was one of the most beautiful thing I've ever seen because I've been a contractor and I know how devastating uh, 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 it could be uh, dealing with the administration in the city of Oakland. But to all those accolades, sir, let's get let's dive right in. Since you left the position of mayor of Oakland, California, until the time Mayor Libby Shaft, and my this is what I call it, aka Mayor Lobby Libby Shaft, who shafted Oakland, mm -hmm. came to be mayor, what were the changes that you saw that caused irreparable harm to the people of color in Oakland, California? Well, I mean, overall, not just people of color, lack of a strategy to solve problems. You know, when you're talking about urban America, you're talking about people who are impoverished, you're talking about people who are suffering from economic or, or racial uh, disadvantage or prejudice, uh, you're talking about uh, difficult technology transferences, people who are not able to adapt to a, a, a high technology world. Uh, you talk about all kinds of things, educational challenges, you name it. You got to have a strategy to deal with challenges. If you don't, then those problems are going to become overwhelming and become what they are today, which is a crisis. Well, sir, you said it eloquently. And we just had the uh, deputy mayor on last week, Deputy Mayor Kimberly. Uh, I've mm -hmm. tried to get Mayor Shang on, but I... Uh, she's very difficult to get in touch with. Uh, mm -hmm. I know prior to her campaign, we talked frequently, but uh, well, that's part of the, the problem. You can't you can't retreat in the city hall. The problems are in the community and the streets. That's where you got to be. If you think you can stand city hall and solve the problems of the city, you're mistaken. You know, I couldn't have best said it better myself. Uh, uh, last week, Deputy Mayor had some. She said there's some things in the works under the current administration. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. Uh, I, I am seriously concerned with the Hagenberger corridor. I've had friends to come in and visit me and their cars were broken into uh, and burglarized. Black Bear Diner, gone. Denny's, gone. Uh, 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 right. In and out, and they're making money. Right. They're leaving. Uh, uh, right. What is that other one? Starbucks gone. You and Kaiser mm -hmm. and uh, what is that? Uh, Kaiser and Clorox. They are definitely mm -hmm. talking about um, uh, telling their people, "Don't bring mm -hmm. your lunch. Don't go right. out of the building unless you're going home or you're coming to work." Right. Do exactly. you know how? I mean, does I've the never city go? I've never seen that before in any major American city. Uh, that in and of itself is an indictment. Well, just think about the businesses around there that depend. And Kaiser has thousands of employees. Clorox have, I believe, hundreds. Of, look at all the money yeah. that those small businesses are going to lose. I had I, When you were mayor, this was a thriving city. This was a city I was really proud of. 
I mean, right. your accessibility was wonderful. And it's it's like we just, it's like the plane was just going up. And then when you left, it just did like that. And then it started going down. And this is where we are today. Well, well to be fair, Jerry Brown brought in urban dwellers into the downtown area. But what he didn't focus on was the services required to maintain a quality of life downtown. I mean, police services, uh, social services. Uh, you can't be overwhelmed by the homeless, even though they have to have a place to stay. You can't have your downtown become the city's homeless center or transfer all to the Hagenberger corridor and think that you solved the problem. Well, see, you maybe you we have maybe you need to uh, start up a mayor training school because everything you said is right on point. And and well, if you, I, you know, I haven't talked to the mayor since she's been inaugurated into office. I called her uh, the Friday after the election uh, to offer my congratulations and support. I've not heard from her as we speak. Well, I think I've heard from her twice since she's been elected. Mm -hmm. She did invite me to the Joy, uh, uh, Black Joy Parade. Uh, last year, she made me Black Man of the Month, Negro of the Month in Oakland. <laughs> right, 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 right. But um, um, you're right. She, she's got to get out in the community. You know, these pop-up picture poster uh, things that she does, they're fine and dandy. But um, I'm from DB East Oakland, and I have friends from West Oakland. They are very, and these are people who I got to change their mind, who was going to vote for Lauren right. and right. vote for um, uh, other people on the ballots. But they told me don't even mention her name. And I'm just, you know, if you're watching out there. Yeah, I, I, I think she's a nice person. And I think that she means well. I think that when she says that the problems are not her uh, fault, uh, that's probably true. But they are her problem. And that's the reality that comes with the office. You know, uh, when I left the legislature and ran for mayor, uh, it was a very difficult transition. It's a lot different being in Sacramento, where you can blame everything on the governor, than being mayor, where people are bringing everything on you. But hey, that's the job she ran for, come to the territory. Well, I'm gonna give a shout out to, I see Anthony Harris, that's my cousin out there. He... <laughs> I, I know your cousin. Huh? And I see, and I know your cousin. Oh yeah, oh, you know my whole family. <laughs> that's true too, that's true too. I just want to acknowledge uh, Anthony, that's all. All right. Uh, next question, sir. What are your thoughts? And your thoughts as a outstanding mayor who ran this city uh, like a tight ship. What are your thoughts on pulling the community back together where citizens cared about their neighborhood instead of fearing their neighbor? Thank you, sir. Well, first of all, uh, it's a difficult job. Anyone who says anybody can do it, it does not have a sense of reality. And you and some of it is learning on the job. Uh, there are some of these problems that you cannot anticipate, even though she was on the city council for four years. Uh, when you have to take them on yourself, uh, one, you got to have competent people around you on your on the mayor staff, as well as the administrative staff in the city. Uh, they have to be committed to problem solving. They have to be strategic and they got to be inclusive. Uh, that means you got to go out into the community, even though you're going to get criticized, you're going to get blasted uh, because people are concerned, people are angry, goes with the job. You got to start listening to people. You got to start coming up with answers. You got to be strategic and you got to understand you're not going to solve the problem overnight. So I just think that the mayor needs to roll her sleeves up, uh, come out, uh, you know she's going to get beat up a little bit. Uh, the people have genuine concerns. It's not personal. It's business and do the business of being the mayor. You know what? Everything you said is right on point. And I'm hoping somebody have her listen to this show since she has not called you back. And let me, let me be clear on it. And I'm going to be very, very, very factual. If I was voted in as mayor, I would have I would have a sub office for Mr. Elihu to come in and teach me about running a top ship. And the next question goes to what we've been talking about. 
what are your um excuse me your thoughts on rampant crime in Oakland causing businesses to close, as we just said, such as Denny, In and Out Burger, uh, crime along the airport corridor uh, of Hagenberger Road, businesses such as Kaiser, which we just mentioned, PGE, uh, they're robbing them as they go to work. PGE advising employees to stay in their building instead of venturing out during their lunch or break times due to crime and hiring security for their employees. You got I mean, that's ridiculous. Hiring security for their employees. And this is also negatively impacting neighboring cities. Now, I say all that's a long question, but what would you do? Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, several things. One, uh, you got to restore a sense of safety. Uh, when I was mayor, a Chinatown was open till two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. You go out and get food midnight in Chinatown. Now people are leaving their offices or leaving their stores at four o'clock in the afternoon. So that's just Chinatown. I was out at the uh, in and out about two weeks ago, about nine o'clock on a Thursday night. Uh, none of the restaurants there uh, were open. You had to go through the drive through. You couldn't go into the restaurants. And that was the in and out the uh, Panda Express and the Crazy Chicken or whatever it is. Um, and Walmart, it was so dark, so desolate. Uh, you had to know they were there and you had to be willing to drive through a very dark parking lot to even get there. Uh, you know, you've got to have light. Uh, you got to have safety. Uh, you got to have a sense of security. Uh, when women can't carry their purse into a grocery store, uh, that's a problem that has to be addressed strategically and quite frankly, interactively. They need a task force on public safety and they are involved the federal, the state, as well as neighboring uh, law enforcement agencies, including the county sheriff, uh, as well as neighboring uh, city city uh, police forces. You know, look, the problem in, uh, in Oakland didn't all start in Oakland. Uh, recently when a police officer was killed, the perpetrators allegedly came from both Chico and Stockton. They didn't come from Oakland. Uh, a lot of the crime in Oakland is not perpetuated by people who live or work in Oakland. Uh, they perpetuate how people come in and victimize Oakland uh, because they don't believe A, they're gonna get caught, or B, if they're caught, they're not gonna be prosecuted. Uh, those are two things that can't be tolerated in any urban city. I don't care if it's New York or Chicago, Birmingham, Alabama, there's gotta be a sense of public safety and certainly punishment uh, if arrested and convicted of a crime. Well, everything you said is allegedly supposed to be done, but I don't understand, and I've been here 61 years all my life. I've never right. seen Oakland like this in my life, and it's scary. Well, first of all, first of all, you can't hire police dispatchers. There's 20% vacancy in the city's workforce. People in public works are not there. There's nobody cleaning up the street. You go up and down International Boulevard, it looks like you're going up and down a pigsty. You know, you got to have both the perception that the city cares about itself, that the city workers care about their jobs and care about the service that they're providing to the citizens of the city. In other words, everybody got to care. The citizens can't just throw dirt on the street or throw their gum wrappers down, uh, spit it in the street or pee in the street, it's got to be a sense of, hey, we got pride in our community. We're all in this together. If we aren't willing to work together, then we don't have a community. We don't have a civilized society. Uh, we got to respect each other. Young people got to respect their elders. Elders have to respect and support and protect the young people. Hey, it's a civilized community, which means everybody is interdependent. If we don't understand that. We don't have a shot. Well, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Uh, the next question is going to really knock your socks off. Why is Montclair and Piedmont able to do in regards <laughs> to daily quality of life that the rest of Oakland seems unable to achieve? Is it the license plate reader camera system just featured on the new for Piedmont? Perhaps that helps detour crime in that area of Oakland that has a high population of Caucasian homeowners. Why can't Oakland mirror that? Well, first of all, uh, 
But there's problems up there too. There's crime, uh, women getting robbed on the way up to Merritt College, um, on Redwood Road. Um, no, it's happening everywhere. People can't go to the gas station, even in Montclair. So don't take the idea that it's not happening all over the city. There's no place in the city that is not being impacted by crime. Car break-in, carjacking, uh, theft in retail establishments, um, all of these things are happening Some in some areas, less than others, because people are out on the street. Uh, but no, crime is a problem citywide. And uh, I can tell you that if you go to, uh, to Montclair or anywhere else in the city, including the more affluent areas uh, like Rockridge, uh, they will tell you uh, they are not in, in any way uh, exempt from or not subject to criminal activity. Well, if, if like you said, <clears throat> they may have crime, but the streets are clean. The uh, streets are cleaner, um, and and all of that is true. And I can't give an explanation for that other than uh, maybe people are being a little more careful with their refuge. Their you know, people got to also participate. You know, you can't just throw stuff down on the street. You can't just overflow the public garbage bins and think that somehow or other somebody's going to clean it up. Yes, somebody should clean it up, but. You know, it's like when you dump garbage over off of, uh, you know, by the railroad tracks in East Oakland, uh, you think some, somebody, somebody's job, yeah, so maybe somebody's job to clean it up, but why'd you dump it there? You know, you think that East Oakland is like a trash bin or the city dump? You know, come on, it's not just the city's responsibility. People have responsibilities too. look out for each other. You know, make sure the women are safe. Uh, make sure that parking lots are lit. Uh, make sure that children are not exploited. I mean, we all got to do our part. We can't hire enough police officers to protect us from ourselves. Well, I, I got to give our DA, Pamela Price, a shout out. I seen her recently on the news down on uh, 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 14th Ave, right. going house to house. We have a high um, uh, degree of uh, right. exploitation of pop prostitution. Right. The young girl, she was right. out there giving leaflets out, talking to the young girl, giving them options. Uh, so I, 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 these are the types of things where I've never seen before outside of the box, thinking outside of the box. Let me ask you something. Uh, I, I, let me say one thing about that. I think Pam Price's intention on social uh, justice are absolutely spot on. The problem that uh, the DA has is that you can't balance social justice on the back of public safety. It, it, it can't be one or the other, it's gotta be both. And public safety has to come first. People cannot understand why you're more concerned about those who are perpetuating crime predators and those who are being victims of crime. So I think it's perception. I don't think it's that she doesn't care. I don't think it's that she's not out there, but certainly uh, you gotta make sure that when people are predators, uh, the, they gotta be much more a focus of your attention than victims. That's a great point. If you were mayor, <clears throat> there's a gentleman by the name of Ray Bobby. He's yes. the president and CEO of African American Sports and Entertainment Group, mm -hmm. a friend of the show. Yes. Would you support that? I, look, first of all, I support the development of the Coliseum area. It is a incredible treasure. Uh, when you got that many acres in the middle of an urban uh, community like Oakland, uh, you got you can't leave it vacant, uh, both as a source of taxes, but more importantly, a source of jobs, a source of entertainment, a safety zone. You know, that arena is worth over a billion dollars. Uh, that Coliseum itself could be rehabilitated, maybe used for soccer or some other outdoor sport. But you got to go in with a plan. Uh, you got to go in with a real sense of you're going to be able to have it operating two, 300 days a year. Uh, those are the kind of things uh, that have got to be included in the development of that Coliseum site. You can't just buy the land. You better figure out how to turn it into an economic engine. Well, I, I've seen the plan. I've met with him several times. Um, and I can honestly tell you this. He is uh, down here at my old Ayamata High School, Castleman High mm -hmm. School. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he's getting the kids to help with the design build of that Coliseum and uh, the Oakland Coliseum is ranked fourth or fifth in the nation for location, location, location. You can you can almost finish up a game and jog down to the airport 
The railroads are right there. BART is right there. Bus there is right there. And, and the no freeway question. is everything. Right. I mean, there's, there's no question about Ray Bobby's commitment to doing something at the site. I'm just saying that's the challenge. It's, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. Uh, I'm not saying he won't meet the challenge, because I believe that he will. But that is not as easy as just throwing up a sign and say, y'all come. Well, I know he has Robert Bob working on his team. I and a, I, I know a lot of people on the team. Again, I'm not betting against him. I'm just saying yeah. it's a challenge. Yeah. Well, uh, anything I can do to help him, I've already told. You know, I, I want to make sure it will be the first time in history that a black person would own an NFL team or WNBA team. And I'm all for black economics. Well, that's, that's the challenge. I mean, look, um, when uh, Bob Johnson – so Michael Jordan, the uh, Charlotte Hornets, uh, for a billion dollars. It's not worth $5 billion. Uh, the price of these teams is going up. It's not a declining resource. Uh, the ability for any of those teams, including a WNBA team, is very, very difficult. When the Warriors uh, bought the WNBA team and moved them to the uh, Chase Center, uh, I think that was a, a detriment to the Oakland prospect for WNBA team. But it doesn't mean that they won't have one, but it doesn't mean the challenge has gotten harder, not easier. Well, thank you for your great insight, sir. Uh, a couple more questions before we call it today. Current city council, mayor, and all the infighting, and how can relationships be repaired? Because I believe with all the in-house fighting, nothing's being, well, well you can see nothing's getting done. If you were, or when you were mayor, how did you get the coalition together? Because if, you know, there's always going to be clashes mm -hmm. in the politics, but Oakland is like a, uh, a UFC now, you know, MMA, everybody's body slamming people and gotten them, getting, getting them in chokehold. How would you, under the uh, current chaos down in the administration, mm -hmm. What would you do to resolve that or, or um, at least address it? I, I, I hate to quote uh, George uh, Bush. I would look for a coalition of the willing. Uh, that means you got to go out and get people who, if people are against you um, and they, nothing's going to change their mind, that's a wasted effort. But there are people who are willing to say, yeah, I got questions, uh, but hey, I'm willing to listen. You go out and talk to them. Uh, you right. get, you got to get people to sense, A, you're willing to listen. You can't be intimidated by the criticism, uh, by the fact that some people uh, don't like you, don't believe in you. Uh, if you're not willing to go out to try to change minds after the election, I don't know why, why you thought you could change it before the election. And the last but the most powerful question. You have always been a powerful leader here in Oakland, whether you were in office or whether you're not. What are you working on behind the scenes in Oakland right now if 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 you can share that with us before we close this out i'm working on housing we got to get the uh, unsheltered off of the street into transitional housing into affordable housing uh, into permanent housing because you can't have a community that has three four thousand people including many young people many elderly people uh, many families out on the street uh, it is indicative of any community that they have basic services, housing, right. food, you know, no one should be abandoned. Uh, we're not talking about garbage, we're talking about human beings. Uh, some of them have mental issues, some are drug addicted, some are just simply without skills. Whatever the problem is, we have to deal with it as a community, be inclusive, look to the county, look to the state and federal government to bring resources, look to the private sector. Hey, you know, if we can't, be about everyone who lives or works in our city, even those who may be undocumented. Uh, it's our problem, whether we wanted to, whether we brought it on ourselves, is irrelevant. We got to deal with it, and we got to deal with it in a humane way. We have to deal with it in an expeditious way, and we have to deal with it as a community. It's no one person's problem. It's all of our responsibility. It has been worth every second of my time talking to you your insight on politics 
Uh, you and a couple other people are the reason why I got into politics uh, and I work behind the scene. But I want to thank you, Elihu, for coming on today. Audience, this man led Oakland through one of the toughest times in the history of Oakland. And uh, we need your advice. And if I get a chance to talk to some of the uh, people downtown Oakland, including the mayor, I'm going to ask them to reach out to you because we need help. To that yeah. end, sir. Hey, I got it. But you know what? Hey, start knocking on doors. Start talking to the people in the community. Uh, they're the ones who have to be convinced. Uh, like I said, you got to form a coalition of the willing and it starts neighbor to neighbor, door to door. And uh, and the mayor can't do it alone, but the mayor's got to be the catalyst. On that note, Mr. Elihu, you have a great evening. Thank you for coming on the show today. And I'm going to encourage our politicians to pull this show up and listen to somebody who has a successful track record in the city of Oakland, because right now, I, it, to me, it feels like the Titanic at times here in Oakland. So thank you, sir. You have Appreciate a great evening. You. Listen, thanks, for every, thanks to everybody, including your audience. It communicates to the beginning of understanding. And I appreciate those who are listening, uh, those who will share their perspective, whether on chat or directly with you. Because, hey, if we communicate, hey, we got a chance. We can't do it in isolation. And tell your daughter who been peeking, or your granddaughter who been peeking behind the door. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm my niece. That's my niece. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> and she, she's technologically capable. I am in need of help, and she helped me get on the air, and I appreciate that. And she's a college student, and she's a brilliant mind, and so I'm very uh, comfortable. That the next generation is going to be better than the last. All right. On that note, you have a great evening, sir. All right, uh, Doctor Blasher. Thank you, brother. <laughs> audience as you heard from mr Elihu today we are so proud to have him on the show to give his expertise his wisdom his knowledge in addressing the problems here in oakland county of alameda and the state of california his perspective is like none other uh because he has the experience he has led this city he has been to the assembly he's an intelligent black man with a law degree he is a Kappa Alpha Psi, and he is my hero. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Elihu Harris. Thank you to Mr. Donnie Glover for the honor of the Black Business Roundtable being a part of your growing network dedicated to bringing the real, and once again, it's the real unfiltered news in Black America before the fake news in black america hashtag black usa dot news hashtag donnie glover and it's been an honor donnie glover we're gonna uh hopefully make you proud this year on the uh, west coast as representing black usa dot news donnie glover continue sharing hashtag stand with carlton of raleigh nc 2022 that's where a black man is in jail for life, but defending his business. And we hope, we hope that we, we continue to bombard Raleigh, North Carolina in regards to Carlton Harris. So let's not forget about the brother. He's a hell of a young man. And hashtag justice for Enzo a husky in Lodi, California, that was tased by the police and the animal control and drug down the street in front of the neighbors and community. Ought to be shaming yourself. We need to continue to boycott them. If you want to be in the know and reach our audience, then join our BBRT advertising family or to be a possible guest on the show. Reach us via our email. BBRT2021 at hotmail.com. Include your company name, website, company phone number, social, uh, excuse me, company phone number and social media page info to our email address. And that's BBRT at, or excuse me, BBRT2021 at hotmail.com for vetting consideration audience help us 
grow by sharing our podcast and following us on social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Also, I just want to say this. Please watch our next show. We're going to have a young lady who I've been knowing for uh, almost five years. Uh, she's very active in the Alameda County Democratic Central Committee, and she is going to be talking about her future. Uh, she was also co-chair of the Alameda County Democratic Central Committee, which there are very few black people on uh, the committee. I'm one of the uh, I'm on uh, on the uh, a member of the uh, Alameda County Democratic Central Committee, so I've gotten to know her extremely well. Last year, I believe it was a year before that, uh, right before the pandemic, uh, she allowed me to bring I think it was uh, half a dozen or a dozen young people to help out with the uh, uh, fundraiser picnic that we had here for the club. But she's an amazing woman, an intelligent woman, and I'm I've I always encouraging young people to get involved. We need young people to get involved and we need older people. And I say old guy, old geez, to encourage and to guide the young people into success in the political process that determine where billions of dollars go into our community to improve it. Or if we don't get the dollars, they don't. Uh, we have garbage, trash, debris, and um, when you don't vote, I can tell you this, your elected officials don't care about you because if you don't vote, that means you don't care. To that end, tune in every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 7 p.m. East Coast Time on the BlackUSA.News Network on YouTube and Facebook. And remember, together, together, not in-house fighting like they're doing down at City Hall, together, we can listen, we can learn, and we can share. Because I know you care. This is Doug Blackshear uh, and Mr. Elihu, we want to thank him for coming on the show today. He did an outstanding uh, 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 wise counsel to sometimes uh, unwise leaders in our city, in our county, in our state, and in this country. Doug Blackshear and Dr. Ashley, hopefully returning soon, of the Black Business Roundtable. God bless and good night.